So my name is Colin Angle. I'm the co-founder, CEO, and chairman of iRobot. And um, iRobot is a company that makes practical robots. We were founded back in 1990 with this radical idea that it was time that robots became real. Enough of the robots on Hollywood movies and screens. Uh, we wanted robots to come into our lives and try to realize the potential that we all knew they would one day have. And so that uh, over the past 24 years, uh, we've been inventing robots that probably don't look like what many people think robots are supposed to look like. They're not androids, but they are these living machines which come into your world and do things for you. The most famous of which is, is the Roomba. Uh, we're excited that uh, we've just passed the 10 million Roombas sold threshold and reached a point where robots are actually having a profound impact on our lives. We are disrupting industries. Um, here in EU, uh, it's a fact that the number one selling vacuum cleaner, not robot vacuum cleaner, but the number one selling vacuum cleaner in Spain is Roomba. The robot vacuum cleaning industry represents a full 15% of the dollars spent on vacuum cleaners. And so uh, this is real. And from vacuum cleaners, we're moving to uh, floor mopping robots, floor scrubbing robots, gutter robots, pool robots, and then industries like business collaboration and healthcare. I think that robotics in general, sort of people naturally are drawn to thinking about, well, let's make robot versions of people. And that's been a very big challenge for robotics for a long time because building robot versions of people is very expensive, very hard, and does not necessarily result in the ideal solution, right? Why should it be that to vacuum, I need to build a person and then give them an upright vacuum? Why not build the vacuum without the person that can guide itself around? And then you can make it very short so it can go under carpets, I mean, under, under couches and tables. And you can make it radically less expensive so you can actually afford it. So the thing that iRobot had to do in order to become a legitimate business is take a great step backwards or sideways or away from the traditional notions of what a robot should be in order to make a robot that can deliver more value than it costs to build and as a result make a viable product, make a viable business, and then use that business to fund the development of the next technologies and the next robots. The general purpose robot versus specialized robots, the, uh, again, I, we take a very pragmatic view. If you're trying to build a vacuum cleaner, you want it to be small to go into tight spaces, and adding a lot of um, structure to it to make it larger so that it could look you in the face if you wanted to interact with it would make it a worse vacuum cleaner. And so it makes sense to divide vacuuming from interacting with people. There are very different problems. And uh, if I was building a robot to interact with people, like our Ava 500 robot, it wants to be tall enough so that if both of, our, both of us are standing, it can look you in the eyes and have a conversation. If you're sitting down, it should move down and, so that, uh, and sit down at that table as well. So, uh, it doesn't feel like it's preaching to you. It's, it's, it's having a peer-to-peer -peer conversation. Uh, it needs video and, and high-quality audio systems on it, uh, whereas the Roomba doesn't. And so the uh, dividing up of, of tasks make sense. The tools that we have to play with are much increased. Gestural interfaces. Well, the video gaming industry is pioneering that. Also used to be a robot problem. So we have much more powerful tools to work with. And what robotics companies need to be working on has become clear, uh, much more clear. Navigation, perception, manipulation. And what the future holds for robotics are products and services enabled by this integration of other industries like gaming and mobile coupled with robotic advances in nav, mobility, and manipulation uh, and perception
to create higher value products that can do more. iRobot has three different main business areas. The, the home automation, the remote presence, and then defense and security, uh, which is another type of remote presence that just happens to be outdoors. Uh, it has manipulators on it already and uh, it goes into very, very dangerous and challenging uh, environments. Uh, this is a good business. This is something that we're very proud to be able to help the world with some of their most dire challenges. We sent robots to the, uh, uh, the reactors in Fukushima, into the Gulf of Mexico, into caves in Afghanistan, and are glad we were able to go and make a difference, and we feel like it's something that we can do and so that we should do. How does it all tie together? Our defense uh, and security business does, in fact, give us more uh, information and experience as a business interacting with people, the man-machine interfaces, the manip manipulation challenges that we're, we're um, uh, pioneering, spearheading, as well as climbing stairs and operating uh, in uh, difficult environments. And the home is oftentimes a difficult environment. So uh, it does tie together. We're just scratching the surface as to the ultimate market potential in the spaces we serve today. But when you think about all of the different uh, applications for robotics, uh, it, it's very obvious to uh, come to the conclusion, or easy to come to the conclusion, that we are just about none of the way to realizing the potential that robotics will ultimately serve.